This is a very simple boat stand construction here. The base is a piece of one by six finished pine. And I got two pieces of bats for the verticals. Those are quarter by inch and three quarter decorative bats, leftover material from the bats we have on our walls. Glue them on with tight bond. Got two pieces of small pipe insulation to go on top. The only dimension to worry about is this spacing here. Put the foam pipe insulation on the bats. Found the spacing where the foam clears the inside spots and it's four and three quarter inches. Taking care of some final details on the paint job. Got the windshield painted and I've got the cow locks epoxied in. So here's a look at the bottom of the boat. It's all natural. Bottom of the boat, stumble blocks inside the sponsons. Painted the boat stand with the white class coat two part epoxy paint. Love the durability of it. Set it up on screws so I could do everything in one coat. This pipe insulation, you peel this plastic off, has adhesive on it. Here is the finished boat stand. Pipe insulation glued on. On the bottom, I have these adhesive backed non skid feet. They're covering the marks from the screws during the painting process. Here's a simple way to make your own waterproof decals. Pick your font, size it, print what you need. In my case, I need team on both sides of the boat. Fold it in half. It's backing, so number 11 exacto. It cuts the lettering nice and clean. So after I cut them out, I'm putting them back into the cutouts for spacing. Very important, before I started cutting, I had a piece of tape laid out on the counter to let the static electricity dissipate from when it separates off the roll of tape. Now, curl it like this. It's the type of thing you get one chance at it. So I don't want to stick this down on the paper, but I want to pick up the letters. So I'm going to put this edge down. And I'm going to quickly approach that. And now reach behind here. Touch each one of these letters so they're sticking a little better. Now I'm going to gently peel this tape off this piece of paper. I'm going to pick the letters out with the proper spacing. Since I didn't press the tape down on the paper, take your time. You can peel it back off the paper without picking up any particles of the paper. If you do, you've ruined it. Here, another one, try again. So now I have team printed, cut out, spaced on this tape. Now over here, I have a piece of paper or a piece of tape just laid down on the counter. I have not pressed it down. I'm just lining up the edge, start in the middle, rub this down, don't get any air bubbles. And then pick this tape. I have two pieces of tape stuck together. Off the counter. Make sure the counter's clean before you put that tape down. So now this team font is captured between two pieces of tape.
There is my waterproof decal. Now let's take that technique a step farther. Another homemade decal here, a printed number seven on computer paper, font and size I wanted. And the yellow background is colored paper for scrapbooking. Cut out the number seven, rubbed a light coating of Elmer's glue on the back side, glued it to the um, yellow paper. Reason for that is I don't get any bubbling. There'd be no adhesive behind there if I didn't. It would stay in place, stuck to this top surface of tape, but it'd bubble. Position that on there, glue it on there, and then this is way simpler. I can now flip the tape over and just position this yellow color paper on the tape and then put this piece over another piece of tape my waterproof seal is right here, this border. Here's my Team Zip Kits decal on the boat. Here's the number card on the other side. Here's what NASCAR would call your sponsor stack. I'm not building a scale boat here. Just trying to get the flavor of the F1 outboard tunnel hall look to it and after a bit of research I noticed they had very busy paint schemes they all have a number block on them and the location and even the background color of the number block can vary I'm not drawn to these two boats the color scheme but these number blocks are under the window and they both have a different color background Here's a color scheme I'm very drawn to, but I think that'd be a nightmare to try to replicate that, make all the decals for that color scheme. I love these colors, but the layout's not great. And this is another one I wouldn't want to have to make all these decals. Then I saw the Abu Dhabi boats. Best I can tell, there are three or four of them. And I'm very drawn to these color schemes. This is when I first got the idea to add silver to my color scheme for that third color. Although this one may be chrome. Looking at them convinced me to try the silver as a third color with the red and white in my color scheme. That's how I developed my color scheme. Look at lots of pictures. And between all of them, come up with a standoff scale F1 lookalike. I am adding an eighth inch lamination on the transom. Same time, I am covering up those epoxy filled holes in the transom that I'm not using. Got my holes laid out on the transom piece of tape pulled tight across the bottom of the sponsons at my lowest setting I am a sixteenth of an inch above the bottom of the sponsons the manual says start out eighth inch above so I'm still allowing myself to be able to go a little below that so I've opened the holes up with the slots here and this will let me go all the way to quarter inch above the bottom of the sponsons Got the motor hung. I am verifying how accurately I drilled the holes through the transom to my marks. This is with the outboard all the way down. 
I am a sixteenth of an inch above the bottom of the sponsons. If I line the setback mount up even with the eighth inch mahogany extension I laminated on the transom, works out nice. I am exactly eighth inch above the bottom of the sponsons. If I raise the outboard to the highest position with the extended slots I put in the setback mount, I can get to 5 16 above bottom of the sponsons. That's the shaft center line. That gives me 16th of an inch on either side of the recommended range by zip kits. Final check with everything tightened down. I have the camera set up so the bottom of this sponson lined up the bottom of that sponson. I'm going to start off the prop shaft center line, eighth inch above the bottom of the sponson. And it's not hard to check that the prop shaft center line is level. Line that up with the center line of the prop shaft or that drive dog. Start off with a neutral setting. I've pulled a line for putting the holes through the transom in the back of the radio box with a pull pull linkage. I'm also allowing for adjusting the outboard from the lowest to the highest setting. And as the arm swings through the range of motion, so it doesn't rub on either side of the hole in the radio box. done. I went ahead and finished all the details after I got the pull pull um, linkage set up. Wasn't much standard building. Put the ESC in, um, receiver, ran the wires, wired the motor, and the coolant. So Take a look inside. One of the neater electronics installs I've ever done. ESC is a 4S LiPo, 4,000 milliamp hour, and servo and receivers up here. I have exponential already set up and I've reduced the speed on the servo. So here's full. Full turn either direction. If you didn't reduce the speed, it would snap the outboard around too much. And then right around the middle, I have, I think it's 60% um, exponential. I'll be taping this hatch on. Won't need to access it. Have it set up where I just plug it in and Everything's on. Putting this servo up front really made a difference. I added another slot. I have this battery all the way back for it to balance, which normally with an outboard, you're moving your battery forward, even worse, adding weight up front. So that made quite a difference, putting that servo up front the pull-pull cables.
I have the receiver in here, got steering servo and the cable from the throttle. This is a nice feature right here. Run an extension with silicon in that slot. That runs back to ESC. Here's a modification I made to the kit. These two blocks right here. They're about an eighth inch thick with a taper on them. They center the cowling. So a nice CNC pull pull servo arm. Got the boots on here. Got them zip tied and super glued to the cable. Zip tied up here. It's a nice tidy setup. The cables pretty much run level. They're above the battery. I can put the battery in between them. There's enough play with this much length of cable. So no issues putting the battery in and out. And I have the ESC just Velcroed down. The stock cables reach. They clear the transom. So nothing rubbing back here. Beautiful setup. Taking a look at the outboard setup. So these are the standard length wires coming from the ESC. I have a blast water pickup that comes into the bottom of the motor water jacket. And this wraps around here. Water comes out here, goes into the ESC, got the loop, exits off the back of the boat. The pull pull cables are crimped, super glued in the back. Got crimp in the front, and then got the adjustment that piece of threaded rod with a jam nut with the clevises up front with it balancing with the battery all the way back held down with this slot i added i can't loosen it up anymore which is fine i don't think you want to loosen this boat up got plenty to move it forward to um, like for rougher water but then, if I want to run it on 3S, I could probably put a 3S LiPo up in here somewhere for it to balance. I did make a change to my initial setup. Right here. We currently like to run lower unit with no negative or positive angle. I got that. Shaft center line, quarter inch above the spots and bottom, CG nine inches forward. That's where I'm starting out. Why not? I trust zip kits. You know what they're doing. Get a calm day. I'll take it down the hot pond. Get a maiden in.